Hey developers, today we're doing something really cool. We are creating a blog with a headless backend. In this case, we're using Cosmic, which is a really simple to use headless CMS and API toolkit. We're gonna use some cool technologies. We're gonna create a fully static site using Nux.js. We're gonna use GraphQL and Vue Apollo. So we're using really the latest and greatest in the Vue ecosystem to create a really fast, cool blog. And just to show you a little preview of what we're creating, I went ahead and right over here on this tab, this is the blog we're creating. I didn't put any styling in it, but you can understand this is essentially we are grabbing information from our headless cosmic CMS and pulling it in. But just to show you how fast it is, I ran a lighthouse test on it for mobile. You can see here it is running really fast. I'm getting 98s, 96s on performance on mobile. Uh, and one nice thing is this is fully static. We've actually download the payloads for every single blog post. It's not doing any network requests. It's not doing any fetching. This is all done on the server. And so it just makes it really, really quick. You can see here in the network tab, we're not refetching anything. This is just a really quick, fast blog. And you can see how this is really slick. And on top of this, we actually have this connected up to our Netlify app so anytime we publish a new blog post, it'll trigger this Netlify to rebuild our blog so we can have really fast deployments uh, without any issues. So uh, as always, I will put a link in the description below for you guys to follow along with this app. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, also, I would highly recommend, I'm gonna put a link to Cosmic. You can go ahead and get started for free with Cosmic and you can jump into it. I've actually tried quite a few different headless CMSs in my day and uh, I've been really impressed with this one and how easy it was to get started. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through this tutorial. There'll be timestamps at the bottom here. You can jump around if you like. So yeah, let's let's jump in. I mean, first uh, what you wanna do is make sure you sign up for Cosmic. So just go to cosmicjs.com and you can log in or use the link I'll put in the description. And then once you sign in the first time, you'll be able to create a new bucket. So you just click this add new bu bucket button here. You can either start with Scratch or start with an app. Just for the sake of this tutorial, we will start with an app. It kind of gives you some, some sane defaults that you can use, like start with app here. And then what I did, and obviously it's really, this will hook really well into React, into a Gatsby. Um, Gatsby or any kind of uh, grid sum, it really connects really well to anything that creates static sites. So in this case, I chose simple view blog. And uh, once you select it here, I'll show you, it'll give you the option. You can click start with app. I'm not going to click this, but if I did, it automatically kind of sets up everything for you. And I'll show you what it looks like. If you go back to buckets here, I already did it. I already clicked it here and it created this simple view blog. And it adds a few things on this left-hand side. So uh, the way this works in, in, Cosmic, in Cosmic is you can create object types. And object types, uh, in the simplest sense, can be anything you want, but they can be, uh, a really good example is with a blog post, you can have posts as an object type and also as authors. So in this posts, if we click on it here, here's all the posts I created. But if I click on this little uh, button right here, this little settings, I can kind of take a look at how it is created. So it has a singular name post or plural name posts. It's obviously the object types posts. And then you have this content model. And this is kind of how you would create this object type. And also let me take a step back. One of the reasons you may want to use a headless CMS is that way you can really, really quickly have anybody in your organization to create a blog post, have your marketing people create information, have that get to your app really quickly without having to worry about bothering your developers to, to create a pull request, to get the, the information updated and pushed out to production. And also, if you've ever dealt with WordPress and how slow that is, uh, you know, having a really fast website, especially a static site, is really nice to have and tools like Cosmic really make it easy for anyone to update content. And so you can see here it has meta fields, has an image. Um, you can, and I'll show you what the content looks. It has a description and then it has this author and it even has this little button here that you can have like one to many authors on it. 
Um, I'm not going to get too much in detail of how you can create objects, but I would recommend just kind of playing around with the dashboard in Cosmic and getting an idea of it. To create a new post, you click Add Post. And then in here, this is essentially since we created the object, uh, we can then put our post title. It actually creates the slug for us. This is kind of like the URL that we're going to use. And then it has this really nice content editor where we can kind of drag and drop. We can do bold. We can write whatever we want. We can write uh, different titles, unordered lists. And if we want to, we can just jump right into the code too by clicking the code button if you wanted to do it that way instead. Then it has meta fields if you want to do that. Um, it assumes that this little star here is a required, so you have to have at least one image per blog post. You can put in this, uh, you have to put in some sort of description, and then you have to. An author is actually not mandatory, but you can choose an author as well. So this is kind of the dashboard that you see here. There's also um, plugins and a bunch of other things you can do, uh, which is really neat. And you can go in the settings and and add more more things to it. Uh, but I want to really keep it simple for you. So like this would be like one quick way to start is just add this bucket. And you can definitely have multiple different buckets. I created a test one here, but I could, you know, I can have a bunch of them here. So a bunch of different sites and anybody can log in and then create these posts or blogs for it. Uh, well, one other really nice thing I, I want to make sure I point out is if you click posts here, and you want to know, okay, I have this all set up in Cosmic, but how am I going to connect it to my web app? Like, how is this going to work? You can click this developer tools button right here, and it gives you like sample code. So for example here, use this method below to integrate this resource posts to your website application. So you can see like, oh, here, like right here, I can do um, this, this call to this URL, and this would be the REST response that you would expect. I can also install an NPM module called Cosmic and I can require it. So I can certainly like do this either in the front end or back end. Um, we can use command line. We can even show curl examples. I can just copy this and open up a terminal and just see the data come through. Uh, but what I really like is this GraphQL. So it has a fully featured GraphQL, it even has a playground. I can open this up and really define exactly what I want out you know one nice thing about graphql is you can really do a lot of limits of the data that you want you can limit it you can just get the titles you can just get the contents it reduces the payload size so that's really neat you can you can do everything through this graphql api so i mean it gives you a lot of different options of how you kind of want to use it and also has pretty good docs if you read it i jumped into them it, they were pretty simple to, to learn and if you go into individual posts and you're thinking, well, how would I get this? So they like could see here, this is an individual post. It's all, you know, nicely done here. This is, this is, uh, you know, this is all code that you can pull down. But once if I want to talk to this, I can click Developer Tools here. Same thing. I can here's here's my GraphQL API. API. I do this Git Object instead of Git Objects, and I can then pass in the slug, and this will just grab whatever information I want. I can grab the title, content, and metadata. Now, title right here. Our content right here is essentially everything in this box. So this box is the content, and it'll be pulled down in like basically HTML, which you can then use something like VHTML if you're in Vue.js to convert it into something that could be displayed on the page. And of course, you have all the nice features of publishing it, unpublishing it, and you can even put dates on there so you can publish in the future. So if you're familiar with like another CMS like WordPress, this is this will feel right at home to, with uh, for you. So let's say we wanted to use this simple view blog that I have created already, and I wanted to create this blog I've been I've been showing you guys. So I'll just start from the beginning here. We're just gonna jump right into uh, our VS Code terminal. I'll make this a little bit bigger. And so what we can do is npx, and then uh, for Nux, it's create Nux app, and then we put in the name of the the app that we want to create. So in this case, we're gonna call it blog uh, cosmic and what this will do is it'll download everything the latest and greatest and by the way make sure you have node installed if you don't then you need to make sure you have node installed and I, I have 14 installed so you know your mileage may vary and then uh, you don't need to install any npm packages or install anything global you just do this npx and it should download everything you need so let's just take a second 
Okay, so it's gonna ask us some questions here, and I'm gonna actually go ahead and turn off my video just for a second. Just give us a full screen here so we can watch. Uh, I'm gonna do, uh, obviously I'm gonna do TypeScript, which makes the most sense. We're not gonna do uh, Java, uh, excuse me, JavaScript, we're not gonna do TypeScript. I'm using NPM. I'm not gonna use any, actually we'll go ahead and choose Tailwind CSS, because that's what we wanna use. We're not using uh, Axios Progressive Web Apps or Content on this one. Uh, although content is pretty neat, if you guys ever, I do I do have a, a video on that. Uh, we're not going to use any testing frameworks, and we're going to use universal SSR uh, mode. And then this is really important right here. It's going to ask us if we want to do server or static. And what we want to do is, since we're doing Jamstack hosting with our Cosmic, uh, we're going to do static. So make sure you choose that. And then uh, this is uh, development tools. You can use JSON config, recommended for use codes if you're not using TypeScript. Uh, I'm just going to choose that. That's fine. I'm using Git. And so we're just going to wait a few moments and it should install our next app for us. Okay, great. So it went ahead and installed everything. So I'm going to change directory to my blog Cosmic. And I want to install a couple more things. First, I want to install uh, a module for for Vue.js to be able to talk to Apollo. So this is a Nux.js component for Apollo. So we can do the GraphQL queries and everything we want. And I'm going to do at latest here, and that's going to actually grab the latest version of Vue Apollo. And uh, let me clear this out for a second. Well, let's just go and hit enter. It should install. Let's take a moment. All right, cool. So when installed, and now I just want to install one more thing. I'm going to install GraphQL tag, which will which we'll need to be able to do our GraphQL queries and then bring them into Apollo. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the folder. So I'm going to open up my latest folder here, Blog Cosmic, and then. We are going to reopen the terminal for a second, but let's take a look at our package JSON file and look at it for a second. Now, as of this recording, uh, 4.0.1 RC3 is the latest on the Nux.js Apollo. There's actually a bug that I noticed in it, which was causing me issues. So I actually rolled back to 4.1 uh, RC1. And so that uh, I'm gonna make that change real quickly and then do another NPM install because uh, that will help us in our journey here. So this will just take a moment. Cool. All right. So we got a little bit more configuration to do. So uh, in our Nux config file, we want to add in something into our modules. So we're going to add in Nux.js Apollo. And then we also need to add in some Apollo configurations. And this is actually listed directly in the in the GitHub, in the information, how to set up Apollo. But essentially, you have to give it a place where to connect to. So under this default, we're going to create an HTTP endpoint. And that's going to be uh, hooked up to our GraphQL instance. So we, since we're using Cosmic, and remember, I told you before, we can always go to posts. And we can go to developer tools and look at GraphQL. It's actually, this is the URL right here. So we are going to replace this with that URL. So it should be as simple as that. And I don't think there's any more configuration that we need, which is good. And uh, next thing I would do uh, is I also always like to, since I'm using Tailwind, is create a new Tailwind file. So this is just so that the IntelliSense works correctly in Tailwind with Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And this is, once again, just in the guides for Tailwind. And then I'm going to just reload the window. All right, so hopefully my IntelliSense works. I have a plugin called Tailwind, Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Oh, so that's why I did that, just to make sure my IntelliSense works correctly. Okay, so let's just see if it runs. <laughs> We're gonna do npm run dev and see, oh, we got an error. So let me see where my error is. Cannot find Nux.js Apollo. 
So there's one other configuration we're missing. Oops, so there's actually supposed to be an at sign here. So let me try it again and see if it starts. Cool, all right. So it went ahead and began for us. And since we're targeting static, it actually gave us a message that, hey, we're targeting static. And it's building everything for us. And we can see if it's running on port 3000. So I'm going to open up port. It looks like it's started. Cool. So here is our very basic blog. But obviously, it's not doing anything right now. Uh, but we didn't get any errors. So that's good. So we have everything installed. But I, what I want to do now is add a few queries. So I'm going to create a new folder, uh, folder, and we're going to call it queries. And this is where we're going to put in our GraphQL queries. So one I'm going to call it git blog. I can see I'm going to call it git post. And it's going to have the, the GQL, so that's going to be like a GraphQL query. And we're going to do a, one to call git objects dot GQL. And so these are going to be queries that we're going to use to essentially grab information and display it. And once again, I'm going to cheat here because I don't remember all the queries off the top of my head. I'm just going to copy and paste these. Um, so I'm going to actually do that for my other screen here. But that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm just copying it from there. And by the way, there's this bucket slug and there's this read key. Uh, these are are um, things that you're going to have to have inside your front end to read things. If you're going to actually make changes to your buckets and do write, like actually write things to it, then you probably want to, um, there's some authentication, there's some more authorization that you need in that case. So you probably wouldn't uh, have those in plain text in here. You could also have these as environmental variables or have them as GraphQL inputs. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to hard code them in here. But this may not be the best practice, if uh, just depending on what security and, and what you're doing. Now, this git post is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to copy it. And so I wrote this one. It's really similar to the, to the one we just saw, this git objects. Uh, the only difference is we're going to pass in a slug, which is a parameter. And that's going to be basically the key that we know to, to grab the information, the slug, um, with the, the post that we want. And then we're going to return back the title, content, and metadata. All right. So we have this index.view file. I don't really like it, so I'm going to delete it all. And by the way, I'm using view 2 here. Um, one thing nice, since we are using the latest version, version of Nux.js Apollo, this 4.0, it does support the newer composition API way of retrieving information. Uh, however, as I was testing it, I didn't quite feel like it was working correctly. So uh, it's still in a release candidate. I think I was just doing something wrong. So I'm going to use the other ways that you can grab information out of View Apollo instead of using the composition API. And, and obviously, as of today, Nuxt. It uh, doesn't uh, have Vue 3 support. It's on its way it's soon. So it, it does still use Vue 2. So we won't be able to really uh, use that either. So, all right. So we have, I'm just going to do, we'd have one root node here. Hello world. And just make sure it works. Okay. Hello world in the top right hand corner or top left hand corner. So, first, uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping for my blog to make it not look terrible, but it probably still will look somewhat terrible. But uh, I'm going to do my div here. I'm going to put class. I'm going to put the width at 8th, 12th. And we're going to have a centered. And then uh, I'm going to add a Nux link, which you don't know is the way you can do links. Uh, let's do it like this. Links inside Nux. And this is just going to go back to 2. And just going to go back to the root. And I'll have a div. And I'll put the text for Excel. And we're just going to have a home button here. So it should update. OK, here's a home button. Just goes back to the root. 
but at least we have that in there. And now we want to, uh, let's just say at first, we want to do a GraphQL query just to grab data and display it in our main file in here. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm going to delete a few of these things here. I don't we'll care about the title or the subtitle or links. And now we want to actually do a little bit of of work here. So it's pretty easy. We can import in. We want to import our in our git objects from and that's going to be in our queries slash git objects. And then we're going to use this special Apollo, which is this because we're using View Apollo. And by the way, if you if you're confused, you can go to View Apollo um and they have really good documentation. So you can find everything about it here at Apollo Vue.js. It's just a way that we can talk to GraphQL interfaces, systems. And then we'll do get objects in here. And we're going to do prefetch equals true. And this is just a setting inside uh, on Apollo. And then we'll do get objects, which we just created. So now we should have available for us in our template this uh, get objects so I'm gonna change this I'm gonna put class container yeah container and instead of having a hello world here we're going to actually now put together um, a site so we're just gonna call this full static site and I'm gonna do a div and this is going to iterate over everything I get from our object. So, but before we do that, let's just see, is it even working? So we can just go and put doubly curly braces and do get objects and see what's inside of it. So we come back here. All right, looks like we, we're getting a bunch of information in here. So we, I see slugs, I see objects. So it looks like we're definitely like getting information, which is good. So we are connecting to it. If you look inside the inspect here, and let me see, can you see that correctly? Yeah, you can see it. So if you look in the spec here and then you look at the network tab, when I refresh it, it's doing this, it's doing a bunch of things, but essentially it's grabbing uh, the data from uh, the server. There's a client and server to grab it, which is good. Okay. So, but now we actually want to do a little bit of, of get the information that we actually need from it. So I'm gonna this div. I'm gonna do a v4 here. It's gonna be obj and get objects. Dot objects. And we're gonna do the key is going to be obj dot title. And then I'm gonna add another div. And I'm going to do a little bit of, of work here. I'm going to put a border solid MY10. So we're doing margin and some padding. And then we're going to put a background green 200. That's all Tailwind CSS by there. Those are just utility classes. And then I'm going to do a Nux link. And that's going to bind. And it's going to have a blog. And then we're just going to add in the obj.slug. If you remember, we look at our get objects, we're returning the slug and title. So that makes sense. And then uh, we're going to have a div class here. And we'll do text 6xl. And then this will just show the title. So obj.title. So we did that right. Should update, grab everything from the server. And we'll refresh it here. This will just take a moment. All right, so it loaded up, but it looks like we have a little bit of a problem. Um, they just, let me we see if we can do this. Maybe we can add a flex, flex column. Let's see what it looks like. Actually, let's see if we can do that here in right here let's do flex flex column let's try it here 
there we go. So now we have different uh, names of all our titles of our blog. And But obviously, if we click on this, these won't work because we don't have any dynamic routes set up yet. Sweet. So now to do dynamic routes inside Nux, it's really easy. I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to call it underscore ID dot view. And the underscore tells Nux that this is going to be dynamic. And so now we can uh, basically create our app our, our dynamic information in here. And I'm going to use this vBase. By the way, that's an extension that you can use inside VS Code that just really quickly creates your template. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I want the slug, or basically the, the params that comes from the route, to be uh, to do a query on it. And if you remember, we came back here to get post. We're passing this query in. So this is our slug. So we should be able to grab that out of the route. Uh, let's uh, let's do that, and then we'll just display it. So the top, the template's gonna be really easy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna have this. I'm gonna create it here in a second. We're gonna have this thing called page, and if the page exists, I'm gonna do this vhtml, and that's gonna do the page, and this this is essentially the content for it. Now uh, we want to grab, so we'll do an import. We're gonna grab in that get. Actually, we got call it get post from and this is queries and it was called git post all right now in this export default this is where we're going to do a little bit of of um, we're going to go ahead and grab some information so we're going to do this async and then we're going to use async data and this is a part of nux by the way and from this, we're going to grab a few things out of this. We're going to grab in the grab out the out. We're going to destructure this out of here, the route, and redirect. Basically, this async data has this context, and you can kind of grab a bunch of information out of it. And uh, then we are going to do a try catch, and we will handle an error here. So we might get an error from this try catch, and if we do, we're going to just console log error and we're also going to do this redirect back to the root now uh, to, to do what we want to do we can const we're gonna grab some data and we're gonna do this out of the app dot Apollo Apollo provider dot default client dot query and this is a way you can do queries using uh, inside async data. And this is essentially, as I was researching this, there's a few ways you can do. You can use that Apollo object, but when you're kind of using dynamic routes like this, I found an error, it wasn't working with Apollo, so I had to use it in async data to get it to work right. So I'm gonna do a query here, it's gonna be the get post. And then variables, this is a way you can, inside of view Apollo, you can do dynamic data. So I'm going to do this uh, variables. Let's see here. I'm going to do a slug. And it's going to pass in the route params.id. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to return. And we're going to return the page, which is going to be data I think it's going to be data dot data dot get object dot content. I might have too many datas here. Actually, just one data. And we have a error here. Let me see what do I got? Error. Oops, this is actually supposed to be an object here. And I forgot to make it an object. So let me fix this. Variables. So we actually need this. OK, there we go. All right, so this should return a page object for us. Uh, let's see if it works. So here's our, our app. Click on one of these. Oh, uh, let me stop and restart the server. Just one sec.
Actually, let me try one more thing. I need to create a folder here because I did say I wanted to put in, put in slash blog. So I'm going to create a, a folder here called blog and then move the ID to blog. And I'm going to restart the server. Okay, so it's listening again. Let's try it again. And now I'll click on one of the posts. Sweet, so cool. Now it's went ahead and connected to the server and it got my blog post. So how to display, here's the whole blog post. Sweet, so now I have it basically connected. It's using GraphQL, it's grabbing the information. Uh, it was working pretty well. So the last thing I wanted to show you is how I can actually use this with Netlify. So just what you wanna do is just sign up for a free Netlify account. And then what you need to do is uh, install, uh, go ahead and upload your your re repository onto GitHub. I believe it's maybe it supports more than just GitHub or Bitbucket. And then you need to do a new site from Git. You click up here. You choose either GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. You choose GitHub or Git whatever it is. It'll authorize it through GitHub, and then it'll ask you what repo that you want to connect it to. So I already uploaded my Git my repository GitHub, and I chose Cosmic Nuxt app, which will be the link in the description. And if it doesn't show up in here, you can click this little button right here, configure the Netlify app on GitHub, and then it'll it'll bring up GitHub and it'll ask you if you allow it to have access, and it'll ask you if you want to have access to all your repositories or just some of your repositories. And you just need to configure that. And then once you click here, it'll essentially do everything for you. I'm not gonna do it, but um, it'll create this right here. And you can then, it'll ask you um, some settings for your deployment. And what I, you have to do is it'll ask you for a build command. You just do npm run generate. And then the publish directory, you just put in dist. And that's pretty much it. It'll go ahead and just the first time you do that, it'll build it and it'll put it up on uh, the website. It'll give you like a domain here that you can test it out. You can also put your own custom domain in obviously. Now the la to do something really fun is once you go in there, you can actually hook it up to Cosmic, so every time you create a new publish, you publish something, it'll automatically get built. And the way I did that is I went to, let's see here, deploy context, build hooks right here. And I copied the build hook. I just actually clicked add build hook. I gave it a name. I just chose the master branch, which is master. Obviously, if this was a production app, you may want to have it automatically um, build to like a development branch and then have like a manual process process to actually move it into master just in case. But for a simple fun blog, I just chose master. And then I copied this URL here. And then inside Cosmic, um, I went into the, I believe it's the dashboard here. And in simple view blog, I went into settings and then webhooks. And then it asked me right here, Cosmic makes it easy to add webhooks. I copy and pasted that URL into, I clicked the add another webhook, I added it, I put it on object edited and published, object created and published, and I just copy and paste them into all these endpoints here. And anytime the media is created too, I assumed. And that was it. So I can give you an uh, example. So if I go back to posts here and you can see here's the website, it's on the web. You can see here that this is my awesome post of my last one. If I create a new post, let's say for YouTube video, this is for the YouTube video. And I don't know, I can even insert a video if I knew one I had in here. I don't know, let's, let's go to my website. If you don't know, you can go to eric.video and that'll always bring up uh, if you go to HTTP, eric.video, <laughs> that'll actually always redirect you to my YouTube website and ask you to confirm too, if you're not already a subscriber. So I don't know, I could, let's say here, I wanna grab this link here hey, and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to my Cosmic and I'm gonna paste in the URL, insert. So now it went ahead and inserted this, this YouTube video I'm gonna give it an image you have to add in. It's uh, you have to add in at least one image. Put my face in here. 
uh, test for YouTube. I don't have actually myself as set up as an author, but I could certainly just pick one that's already set up in here. And if that looks okay, I'm gonna try save draft. Okay, cool. And now I'm gonna publish it. Okay, it says update saved. It's published. Now if I go back to Netlify, I don't have to do anything. It should do it for me. I can go back to, I can click here at the top for deploys. It says processing. So it already, I'd automatically see cosmic build. It already got triggered by that hook. As soon as I published, the hook got triggered. And if we just give it a few moments, this website should, oh, look, it's already there for a YouTube video. Sweet. So it just took like a few seconds. The whole site got rebuilt. Um, it's working as we expected, which is awesome. Let's see here. I think it's still, it might be still building processing. Yes, yeah, it's processing here, but it was really, really quick. It, it, you know, what happened is that the site hasn't built completely yet, but it noticed that there was a difference when it, um, it like, even though it's statically cached and it automatically, it's not connecting to the cosmic, it noticed there was a difference. So now it is, and it's showing up here. But once this deploy goes through, okay, it says it's published. If I look at the network tab, I'm gonna clear this out and refresh. So I don't see anything here. I didn't do any, uh, any XHR requests. Click on here. So this is fully preloaded. It does give you this ID here because it's um, through Google ads. That's not anything bad. Yeah, it's already done. Uh, it's super duper fast. Yeah, that's it. So I just wanted to thank Cosmic uh, for giving me the opportunity to do this video. I would highly recommend check this out. I'll put a link in the description below. I appreciate it. If what, Tell me in the comments what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Leave a comment below. Thanks.